And uh, I don't know if I'm actually introducing this or not, because we recorded a couple of segments out of order. Um, so if this is the introduction, welcome. If it's not, you, you won't hear it. But just in case it is the introduction, we will be talking about the adulteress and the blood brothers. What's uh, this show called, Clive, by the way? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, and, all right. And the connection here, the connective tissue, as some people might say. Oh, there it is. Is that uh, these, both these films seem to have um, been copied later on by that naughty young man, Wong Jing, for his Chinese torture chamber stories. So they will, um, they will appear in a bonus episode of not in Shawscope, because this is in Shawscope. So, fuck you, Nick, for interrupting me. Um, anyway. It's 1963. Uh, so, as we know, you know, President Kennedy uh, has just been assassinated. Uh, the uh, Great Train Robbery has taken place. Um, the uh, Pope has just died. I get the feeling um, even that Nick's trying to elevate this... Uh this um, YouTube series. Yeah. And uh, the it's, adult... It's a bit like a Rod Serling introduction, isn't it? <laughs> the uh... picture of scene. <laughs> Kennedy has just been assassinated. Yes. <laughs> and, the, and the adulteress, or the adulteress, depending on uh, which way it's spelt, um, or what is the actual title of this film? It's... Adulteress. It, no, 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 but there, there, there is a, like, it's uh, Yang Nai Wu Yu Zhao Bai Kai is the uh, the actual title. Good, good, um, good, good attempt there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, we're talking another... Um, you actually opera. just, you just called Xi Jinping a cunt, but carry on. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but he is. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well done. So we're looking at another um, Huang Mei opera um, uh, made in 1963 uh, by uh, the director whose name I cannot remember right now. Um, it's Li Han Shang, who we yes, thank you. Uh, Dao Charn, Enchanting Shadow, etc. Right. And, uh, Hu Meng Hua, who um, later on went on to specialize in, he's known for doing some of the weirder films that came out of Shaw Brothers, right? Including, which we've spoken about before, our favourites, Oily yes. Maniac. Mm -hmm. And Ho Meng Hua will be all over this, uh, oh, yeah. like a rush at uh, at a certain point. Yeah, uh, Se 70, mm -hmm. what is, is it 76 or 77? We've got Black Magic coming up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, um, yeah, all sorts of uh, yes. snakes and things. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that'll be in like, 50 years by the time we've watched every P. Ramley film and every Chinese opera. <laughs> do we really have to watch every P. Ramley film? I I yes. do love P. when he's serious. Um, but yeah. some of the comedy stuff is, is definitely becoming a bit of a chore for me, I have to yeah, say. I'm, get, I'm oh. getting Ramley fatigue as well. See, actually. I'm... I uh, Anyway, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Uh, I mean, does somebody else want to unpack the the plot? Um, I'm oh, going to get ahead of this and say that I yeah, absolutely yeah. <laughs> uh, this movie um, really impressed me. Uh, I'm not going to be. I can't. I can't. I have to I have to say of really of all of the and we've watched a lot of operas and I've liked all of them and some of them a great deal. But this for me might be uh, the high water mark so far of the operas we've watched. Um, and that might be in part because actually it strangely enough has less music. Um, it's a bit more restrained in where it chooses to use the songs. Um, but this film has super high stakes, uh, you know, um, and it's interesting because it almost is two, it's two films in a way. There's this part in the middle where the, the back half of it becomes this endless grind of misery. That's like truly astonishing and, and really like, uh, it feels like a strongly felt um, castigation or like just like this is everything that was wrong 
with the legal system in China at this time. Like, um, like that bit when someone has hot chains put on them that's overlaid with a Chinese character for justice that's hung over the courtroom. Yes. Like yeah. yeah, it's quite subtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes. Yeah. And yet I, I never felt like it was uh, over the top because I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure things were, were pretty bad. Um, you know, like, yeah, it, it's really a kind of a steering indictment of just corruption and selfishness and everything. Yeah, everything that would have been wrong. Um, so, but yeah, I don't, I don't know that I'm, I'm, I'm awake and quick enough to really kind of like, uh, set this out. So I'd like love somebody else to step up and kind of tell us how, uh, 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 I mean, how we get there. I, I want to put something up front and center as well. <laughs> and that is Li Hai Xiang, sorry, Li Han Xiang can fucking do no wrong as far as I'm concerned, because every single film that we've watched of his we've been impressed by. Mm. So, you know, that's Diao Chan, that's The Kingdom of Beauty, Enchanting Shadow, uh, Yang Kui Fei, um, um, uh, The Mad Monk. Mm -hmm. So everything we've seen that he's done has had some measure of sort of gravitas and class to it. Yeah. And this is no different. It's interesting, obviously, forgotten due to mixture of time and geography but yes i get the feeling that he was i mean this is a bit of a uh, odd analogy just because i don't like this man's films as much as other people do but i'm wondering if he was could turn his hand to almost anything in the way some people think steven soderbergh can now Mm -hmm. Yeah, I disagree with that as well, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't actually agree with it because I don't like Steven Soderbergh's films as much. I don't like but, any of Steven Soderbergh's films. Right. At but all. he does have that recognition, yeah. right, of being able to... Yeah, yeah, you can switch yeah. 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 And I'm looking into it, so obviously he would, at a certain point he even opened his own um, studio in, in Taiwan. So he, he opened something called Golden Temple Studio or something, which wasn't very long-lived, but, you know, how many people kind of get the opportunity to, you know, start their own students? Mm -hmm. like, like Chang Chai went off of this and he did it and he was a big. So yeah, oh. he's in he's in that category of people who had enough clout that they could have a go at opening their own studio. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 again, he he seems to have the knack, whether whether he's top of the list of Run Run Shaw's favourite directors, which means he gets the pick of any stars that he wants to use, yes. or whether it's the stars wanting to, to do stuff with him. Mm. He always gets the pick of the stars of the day as well. So, you know, you've got Lu Hua in this, you've got Guan Shan in this, um, who's, you know, we've seen a lot of actually in leading roles as opposed to Kind of old man roles that you see him in the seventies, um, and um, yeah, he's 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 um, he, he's drawing out the talent, he's exploiting the talent, and he's just sort of making big posters of of, of class, you know, around these these films. They would have been uh, all of his films thus far that we've seen. They would have been like the kind of film that, um, non, you know, people who don't necessarily follow the minutia of films or, or you know, who directed this or anything like that. Like, he would op, you know, one of his films would open on a Friday night, and general audiences would go along and see it and be entertained by what they saw. Right? They would have a decent box office like I assume mm -hmm. I assume this one must have done really really well because uh, we'll get to this a little bit but halfway through this film when we get to the court scene it occurred to me that um, this must have been a huge influence on a Chinese uh, torture chamber story I mean in fact Chinese torture chamber story is partially seems to be a, a remake of this actually to a certain extent Except there's no, um, there's no, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's the trilogy of Lust Woman's name? There's, there's oh. no her and Elvis Choi 
um, fucking while doing kung fu and flying through a forest in this film. Unfortunately, more's the pity. Yes, yes. Um, but still, no. This is a lot more reserved, but but still a very potent film for its time. I would have thought. Yeah, I think so too. I I, I was surprised by the um, yeah, the sub really the subject matter. Right, we basically have this absolutely sketchy magistrate's son who is a, a proto Bill Cosby character, basically uh, drugging this um, this woman in order to rape her and then, you know, murders her kind of hook-holded husband, who I really liked um, that, uh, yeah, uh, that, that, I, that actor is Muchu, I think his name is. Uh, yeah. kind of... No, no, it's, um, I didn't recognize him. That's Lee Kwan, yeah. isn't it, as the husband? Uh, I know I have IMDb open and and Chumu. Yeah, Chumu. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I, I it? reversed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That makes sense why I thought Lee Kwan didn't look like Lee Kwan. Yeah, no, it's Chumu. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's really great as this kind of sad sack, gormless cuckold yeah. um, who, you know, I mean, like the, one of the great tragedies of this film is the way it, you know it, it opens with our our you know our heroine right being sold as a child bride basically, and then falling in love with somebody who she can't be with uh, because she's then kind of sold off to this other guy. Um, like her life is just a litany of just tears, um, you know, and and lack of kind of yeah choice, I guess, right? And then yeah, and then becomes the target of the you know. Yeah, the the sex fiend character, um, but it, it and, and again aside from <clears throat> aside from the corruption in the sort of legal system and the obviously um, corrupt, you know, wayward son who is um, Peter Yang Kwan. Um, He's a real scumbag. He he plays yeah, that very well. But, Everyone, everyone else in this film is just doing their best, you know. Um, Lily Hua is just except doing... for the guy who runs the the uh, uh, apothecary, apothecary, whatever the fuck the word is. Oh, shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's a real piece of shit. He might be actually the scummiest character, really, yeah, in that's, the entire that's story. Yeah, fair play. Well, and the magistrate. Yeah, well, and in the legal system. As Chan yes. Pan Chao, I think that is. Um, yes. I don't know how I overlooked that was Chumo. You're quite right, it is Chumo. Um, though it was amazing to me that the whole time I was watching that film, I kept looking it up because I thought it was Lee Kwan. And then I thought, wow, Lee Kwan looks, he's what a chameleon. He doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> it's not him. And then later on, I saw a Lee Kwan in it as a different character. And I remember thinking, does Lee Kwan have a dual role in this film? <laughs> I don't know how I <laughs> look at you, but anyway. Um, yeah. And I think I think that Chumu's Chumu's part, if it was remade in the eighties, Chumu's part would be played by Eric Tsang, wouldn't it? Yes. Yes. So he's that kind of character. He's he's kind of a a, a nice, gentle man, but there's not much about him to write yeah. over. You know, and that's yeah. that's that's the problem. And she's in love with, I have to say, yet again, I, and having seen him in, um, ah, shit, what's the black and white one with Lindai? Well, she's a singer. Uh, Loverton? Oh. No. Oh. Anyway, doesn't matter. But yep. seeing, seeing Guan Shan in this, in, in this period haircut mm -hmm. of bit at the front and the back. That's a fucking dashing man. Yeah. Yeah. Would yeah, he's really... He, his performance is excellent. Yeah. Also, he's, he, he's fucking hot in this. Also yeah. worth mentioning Peter Yang Kwan as well. His um, has a very, 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 very long ponytail. Yes. Mm. That was also notable. Mm. I, yeah, I would imagine that gets trapped between his cheeks uh, every now and then. <laughs> Careful when he goes to the toilet. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um but yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I think that yeah, so 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 Lily Wise is, is very hooked upon. 
and trapped by her circumstances. Yeah. Um, um, Guan like, Shan. Doesn't, doesn't, is, is doesn't this... the movie open with her parents basically dying? Right. Like so, right away, it's kind of established. It's a flashback, yeah. It's a flashback. She explains yeah. that she lost her parents, and then yeah, and then she was sold as a child bride, and and uh, and all that. So she ends up in her situation. Yeah. Before she's um, before she's slipped a a date rape drug by. Uh, yeah. By, but, but the, the the thing is, is that you know the the, the person the, the person the child bride is sold to is not a bad guy. Yes, yes. No, just a dull guy. You know, he's yeah. just a just a dull dude. He's the acceptable. He's in love kid. with her childhood friend, who's a superstar, who's mm. going to become a you know a high flying <laughs> official somewhere. Yeah. He's the acceptable face of paedophilia, isn't he? <laughs> Aren't they the same age, like when they first meet? Yeah, I, got, yeah, I kind of. Got I think it. they're he's supposed to be the same age, roughly. He's a bit yeah. older. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but 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 it's like it's it's like they're you know he, he's a tofu seller. Her husband's a tofu seller, and they've never got any money, and they're always struggling. And um, Pity Yang Kwan is the magistrate's son who's got shitloads of money and loads of privilege, and he's after. He's after Lili Hua. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, there's lots of twists and turns. Right. And anyway. he colludes, he colludes with, with our pharmacist scumbag, right, <clears> to, <throat> to get the drug he needs. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's, Dan, it's really Dan, Dan, central, isn't it? Yeah. Dan Chi Ching is the magistrate. And, yeah, so first of all, obviously, it's, it's, it goes to his court and it's a farce. And, but somehow... This, and this is when, so when it started, started. But before then, though, before then, yeah, before. Then, so he he sneaks into her house and rapes her with a date rape drug, yeah. And then he gets found out, yeah. He gets caught on the second rape, um, by, um, Lily Hua's husband. It's like second day curry, always the best. <laughs> So she's she's obviously matured yeah. in the fridge. Yeah. Um, and um yeah, so there's like this knife throwing business where mm -hmm. um where where her husband where Chumu her husband gets gets killed. And then somehow Guan Shan gets the blame for it. Yes, yeah. And they both they both get sent down for it, don't they? Yeah. And right, but like like he, he's poisoned, right? Like he's given medicine that's supposed to. Was arsenic, but it turns, out to be, arsenic. Turns, turns out to be turns out to be arsenic. Yeah, it's sorry. Like, oh, yeah, sorry. It's it's not the knife thing, is it? Or yeah, no, no. Yeah, he he spits up a lot of blood. He's actually. poisoned. He's fed, right, sorry. Yeah, he's fed poison. But, so it, so um, it starts it starts turning into like I said when it gets to the courtroom bit, it starts turning into Chinese torture chamber story a little bit because there are some actual <laughs> tortures and things going on, and I thought, oh, that could be a coincidence, but then. It's strengthened because there's this whole thing where there's a whole bunch of other extra legal characters who try and get the the truth revealed and move it. Yeah. Like, there's there's multiple level. court, like it goes yeah. on, like there's multiple court cases. Um... And that's when the Chinese torture chamber story things become strengthened. Um, so I just wish I just wish I watched the Chinese torture chamber story. Much more recently than twenty years well, ago. Well, you forget, listening. Darren, that uh, we're going to be stitching this together. So our companion piece to this episode, we yeah. will be talking about. Yes. Chamber story. So we will be doing just that. Yeah. Refer to me later on that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when you start, yeah, we're going to get a bit caught uh, confused by all this, but uh, we, yeah. Hmm. yeah, all the fun of the fair. I will say two things that struck me about the the courtroom was I really enjoyed that weird, beautiful noise that everyone made when so many new came into the court. There was this kind of like humming, like chanting thing, haunting, it, chant yeah. thing. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Really, that goes, yeah. It, was, it gave me like, yeah, it was uh, like you know, chills every time they the did it. magistrate from this town. That right, kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. Um, and uh, and then what was with the traffic cone? Uh, head like headgear that was on some of the guards in there. That was I've never seen that anywhere else before. Um, um, but maybe students in the nineties they were <laughs> right. But I mean, it may be period accurate. It probably is. I think Shaw was usually okay about that stuff. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Um, no, but it's it is um, 
yeah, I mean, we don't want to get into the spoilers there, but 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 um, yeah, no, this, I mean, it's a solid, it's a solid courtroom melodrama, despite being two hours long. Uh, it doesn't drag in the slightest. Ah, uh, no, I, I have heard this. Out. I said this film is long, uh, and very repetitive, but never boring, and the repetition is really effective. It builds yes, and builds a yes, yes, sense yes. of despair and the possibility, it has uh, uh, the possibility of kind of escaping this like this corruption where every time you take it to the next level, you meet the same indifference, the same corruption, the same, you know, uh, lack of concern. I cried twice in this film, which um and I don't think I was even necessarily drinking. Uh and that that impressed me. Uh it moved me like the all the stuff with there's a quite a there's quite a cute scene at the beginning where he's got this our you know um our young you know uh magistrate or whatever or scholar. he's a doctor as well right i mean that's part of how they they frame him is that he's a doctor and he would have been able to he would have known potentially how to poison somebody an all round scholar isn't he he's a... yeah he's just a general scholar but so there's a part where his little his kid is asking him to play the song and he plays the song and then a the scholar friend. must wake up early in the morning or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's that, a cool. That was dream. harsh. That was harsh. <laughs> and when yeah. it comes back later on in the film, in that moment, I it I, it really it was powerful. I was I was quite moved when the song returns in a very sad and depressing place in his life, and when his child doesn't recognize him as being the father anymore because he's so. It's not even that he doesn't recognize. Him. He's frightened. Frightened. He's uh, yeah of this crippled you know, uh, wreck it's of a man. Tripled, fucked up fingers, because he's had the finger torture, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah his, and his legs have been basically broken, like, so that he, yeah. you know, he's not able to really walk properly anymore. And yeah, it's, it's just, you know, I was like, wow, this movie's really, really properly grim. Um, yeah. And as I said, it, it, weirdly enough, the thing it reminded me a little bit of, because I've never seen um, Chinese torture story, but I have, I have seen that, that Lars von Trier Bjork a musical about somebody who, yeah, ends up, you know, it had it had almost that that same consistently depressing grind in that back half of the film where I was like, wow, they are not relenting. Mm. They have got the film has got the thumb screws on and it's not it's, letting it's, me go. It's, it's it's but it's also heartfelt, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not it's not in any way exploitative. Mm. Yes, it's yes, it's turning the thumb screws. Pardon the pun. On your emotions, yeah, but it's not in any way anything like a Chinese torture chamber story. It's, it's that, about, yes, about, it's about milking your attention, your emotions at each mm -hmm. at each stage. Yeah, if it if it, it was funny too, was made now, it would be Korean. I, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing that struck me was like at a certain point. I should have started to dislike the character that Lily is playing just because of the fact that she's consistently um, obfuscating the truth. And you're like, just throw this, these scumbags yeah, on. She the could box. have got him off like a month earlier if she just said, no, I was actually raped by someone else. Yeah. yeah. And there's this element of like at a certain point, but, but I never do. I never did. Was, I never did get like, I always understood that she was attempting in some way to protect because she's trying to protect his child as well. Like there's other stuff going on that she's it's just a very a genuine sympathetic performance as well. There's something she, it seems quite simple, um, but to actually to actually get you on side in that way is actually quite difficult. I'm not quite sure how she does it because mm. she doesn't seem to be doing anything particularly special. Yeah. But, but Cause, she because in in some ways she's actually the villain of the piece herself, isn't she? Because She's a love wing, and you get multiple examples, and there are multiple trials and multiple yeah. tortures. And, and, she, she, and she keeps ways. obfuscating the truth and and, <laughs> and making up more lies that are, yeah. you know, like, yeah. Yeah. And all she has to say is, it wasn't him. Yeah. That, that's basically all she has to say. But she doesn't mm -hmm. have some sort of sense of honor and protection, and, you know. Yeah. So it, it's a really good study of that as well, I think, on the side. You know, but it's it, 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 it's a film that's just just meant to tear your fucking heart out. 
Yeah. Six, yeah. Six. yeah. But quite interesting as well to you know, think, you know, even from early doors, um, for whatever reason, whether he was attracted to himself or he was assigned to it or people thought he was good at it, Hom Weng Hua going over to the dark side, right? Like attracted to grittier, darker material, right? I mean, it's a theme. It's an unavoidable, if you look at it, yeah. there's a lot of these. There's a lot of things that are just a little bit, you know, tinged a bit darker than usual. And sometimes... A hell there's of some, there's dark. definitely some sadism in Hong Kong, yeah. isn't there? I mean, it's not quite, yeah. you know, it's not quite killer snakes, but, you know, it's 1963, right? It's not 1974. But, um, yeah. Um, so, that yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting going forward now, um, chronologically, uh, you know, uh, Hong Wang Hua is one of those directors I'm most looking forward to becoming more familiar with and plugging in the gaps and rewatching. Yeah, but, but I think I think that the success of this film is 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 is, is this film I think is actually very much a, a Lee Han, Han Sang. Yeah, story. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's it's because it it's got it's got those hallmarks. It's got this sort of deliberate pacing, this deliberate building. Yeah. Films did go on a bit emotional tension, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He tended to, yeah, be on that bigger canvas, didn't he? Mm. Right there we go. Then so um, I think we shall end the adult dress chat there. Mm -hmm. And it we... definitely made me not want to be involved in any way, shape, or form with whatever version of legality was was going on in China in this period of time. Yeah. I was like, you know, you're not going to get a fair shake where basically you go in and because they they keep repeating that scene of like he goes in and, and you just get yelled at and told, no, no, you fucking killed that guy, and you're like, no, no, you really didn't. No, no, you did, you did. So and then for that minute, torture. Just to reiterate, this reminded you uh, not to get involved in uh, the courtrooms of ancient China. I think you're safe, Nick. I think you're all right. Okay. Uh, okay oh, perfect. Be dodge that bullet. Okay, excellent. <laughs> and there we go. That was the adult dress. What a fight oh. that was. Um, yeah. Didn't we change quickly? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's... It's our stage background, isn't it? We just go yeah. back stage and we've got the layers on. Yeah, yeah. And, it's my, yeah. my years in Super Kabuki uh, make it possible for me to step behind a post and come out entirely uh, differently dressed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, what I do is I, I like 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 the our childhood favorite, Mister Ben. So mm. I, I I just go off screen and I just take my headphones off, and then my hair and my Clothes change with a little. Ah, I got confused there for a minute, said Aaron. I, you said Mr. Ben, but I was thinking of Uncle Ben and his rice. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a, yeah. Yeah, that's different, a I mean, different, different The possibilities were endless. It could have been Mr. Ed. Yeah. Uncle Ben. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking as recently on 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 our other show, we talked about the film Black Jesus and. Um, hmm. Uncle Ben has a slight passing resemblance to Woody Strode. Yep, yep, that is true. I've thought of Uncle um, Ben for a long time, I, but when I when I imagine, and I, could you still get Uncle Ben's rice? Yeah, yeah, still yeah, alive. So yeah, but when I'm imagining, for some reason, I imagine Woody Strode. Yeah, 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 I can see that. I can see that. I, I might, be, um, and I might be inadvertent, being inadvertently racist at the same time. So it's entirely we, possible. Um, but uh, Clive, also, Clive, having lived in Japan so long, he's able to do um, the magical girl henshin transformation where he jumps up into the air and his clothes fly off and then oh, fly yeah. back to him with a bunch of sparkles. It's it's yeah. it's quite a thing to behold. Like the what's that called? What's the what's the famous what's the thing called? The, well, Sailor Moon would be the most Sailor famous. Moon. That's what I was thinking. Yes, the, yeah, zodiac, but, uh, the zodiac, no, the planets one. Um, Planet, they're all, planets? No, they're all planets. Sailor Moon are all planets. Or oh yeah, yeah. Right? Sailor Mercury, Sailor. I I had a thing for Sailor Mercury. She was the smart one yeah. with glasses. Oh, um. Yeah. Anyway, um. So uh, Blood apparently, Brothers. apparently, there's a transgender character or a non-binary yes. character in yes. Sailor Moon. Yes, 
who was dubbed in the in the American version into a uh, into a yeah into a binary character because they didn't yeah. they weren't comfortable with it. Yeah. But then yeah, yeah. speaking of Battle of the Planets, if we go want to go back for a second, or Gatcha Man, um, I believe that Zoltar, who's the villain in that, is ex- is exposed at the very last episode to be a beautiful woman, where it's always dubbed oh. as a as a dude throughout the episodes when I was a kid. And I remember being yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, surprised and excited to see that Zoltar was a was a lady. Well, I think it's dubbed. I think it's dubbed as male in the Japanese version because I, I went down the Gacha Man rabbit hole about fifteen years ago, and I I ended up watching most of the original Japanese. Gacha okay, Man. yeah, yeah, which which is yeah. which is lots of fun. That's um, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a lot yeah. of time running around the Irish schoolyard with my with my like snorkel coat, you know, just on my head, and the rest of the coat as a cape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot like more, um, a lot more fan service, panty flashing in the Japanese version. <laughs> well, yes, yes, as they're always. Yes, yeah. and 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 people getting killed with darts. Yeah, <laughs> yes, more blood too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which brings us to the Blood Brothers. Oh. Um, yeah. A.K.A. Chinese Vengeance, A.K.A. Dynasty of Blood. Um, so now this one is is seems to be quite beloved. Uh, this seems to be a bit of a favorite. This is one of those ones I think that people who haven't necessarily seen a lot of other Shaw stuff, apparent they've seen this one for whatever reason. This has yeah. quite high visibility. And it's almost like I get the feeling people separated a little bit, like, like as like a, a a towering example of, like oh well you know all that other kung fu chop socky stuff you know, but this is like a proper you know historical drama. Along Once upon a time in the West to yeah, your, yeah. to your lower yeah, tier, or like more West. Kurosawa than you know a, a Chamana hmm. or something like that. You know, hmm. yeah. Am I am I reading the room right that we might be hissing on some hallowed ground? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, I think that that's possible. I have another question because you you two gents know a lot more about this than I do. But I've read in a couple of reviews that this is in itself somewhat of a remake of Oath of Death, a 1971 Shaw Brothers film that I haven't seen, um, but that also features three brothers who are sworn together for to loyalty and things go wrong well i mean you've just you've just um you've just explained about half the shaw filmography there oh fair yeah. enough yes but, but, but i don't know because I, in a I few don't think reviews. i've seen north of death i don't think i've seen no i i don't think i've seen north of death yeah so uh sorry yeah. lowly chen feng and uh wang Wai. anyway uh, maybe it's something to kick down. It's it's seventy one, so it'll be a while before we get there. But um, yes, but maybe we'll have forgotten, we'll have forgotten by that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, we'll see when we get to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to that railway crossing, right? Okay. So for the time being, uh, so yeah, so this is a speculative historical drama, uh, mm-hmm. kind of vaguely based on real events during the Taiping Rebellion. As in the mid nineteenth century, kind of, the, I think around the same time, there's like the second opium wars going on in the background and stuff as well, right? It's uh, it's quite a tumultuous time, um, and uh, you've got um, David Chang and his nunchucks, and Chen yep. Hai are a couple of uh, are a couple of bandits basically. Yeah. And, uh, and not uh, like not like that though. No, not like that. No, They're robbers really, aren't they? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, these couple of fudge packers yeah. one day they they come across T Lung. Mm-hmm. And... I, I I I take responsibility for that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I apologize. Yeah, you definitely primed the pump for that. <laughs> Could you stop stop dropping marbles over there, sweetie? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so what what did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> Some coding going on in here. Anyway, Clive, you were telling us T Long T Long shows up. Yes, thanks, Honey Bunch. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's hard as fuck, and they can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, they can't. Um, and and um, 
although there is a lengthy, quite a lengthy series of fights, which I always enjoy that the other one will always sit it out and be like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> David Chang's the best in. at doing that as well. David Chang's the best at just... <laughs> Whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, actually, you reminded me of um, this is a slight strange tangent, but it, it's quite amusing and all of it amused me. So I, I would like to mention it. My, a student I, I used to have, or I taught English to a long time ago, and you maybe need to hear the story from him because he was a very laconic kind of tall gentleman. But I remember him once telling me the story about um, taking a dump which just would refuse to flush and. He 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 was he likened it to he was saying that this turd was just kind of like ah, just resting on the bottom <laughs> and, and enjoying a shower and just refused to go. So yeah, like a like a decadent Roman aristocrat. Yeah, decadent. on on a couch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. In fed grapes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyway, but, but in this instance, in this instance, the grapes are are are, are pokes of the toilet brush. Yeah, <laughs> or or ass grapes, hemorrhoids. Well, yes. Damn. As I say, it was a decadent time. <laughs> it was. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, so they, so they all they all faces off against them. Yeah, they, I, I, but, and uh, eventually they decide. Well, well, let's all you know team up and become blood brothers and all that. Chums, yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I suppose that's all the kind of setting you want, really, because basically then it's all about this kind of triangle. And then I suppose the other important character is um, uh, Ching, Ching, Li. Ching Li, who plays Ching, yeah. uh, yes. uh, Cheng Guan Tai's yes. missus, who T, her and Ti Lung kind of, because until... Because she's she's happy with, you know, her knockabout uh, Chen Quan Tai, you know, but that's because she hasn't met Ti Lung before. Yes. Yeah. Ti Lung is, you know, he's all man, right? He's all dude. Mm. He's got his shit together. He's not running about like a like Chen Quan yeah. Tai, you know. So I I get that. I get that. Uh, I've never introduced my wife to Ti Lung for that very reason. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, Ger Geraldine already knows about T Lung, so it's it's a constant worry. Yeah, if he knocked uh, on the as... door. Yeah. Yes, I, I was. Yeah. I, actually, Geraldine's a big uh, T Lung fan. Yeah. I, understandably so. But anyway, um, yeah. So there's all that drama going on, as well as all the, you know, I suppose yeah, the mirroring the what's going on in the country. So yeah, so it's kind of like it's a we. It's like a, it's an epic sweep. But at the centre of it is this, this very personal story and how they interact and all that. And also there's some kind of... The one thing I will say before... And I'm not, I'm not going to rip the film to shreds and it's not terrible or anything like that. But the one thing I I will say I do appreciate about it um, is how cynical the political machinations become. Like Towards the very end, it's like... It's like dripping in cynicism isn't it it's just like yeah, yeah. i i did like like that level of it that that uh, element did rise to the level that some people seem to put this film but um for me overall it's too long right for a start for this kind of thing yes yeah, two hours and it's yeah, i yeah. suppose it's neither fish nor fowl, fowl right so it's not it's chang che has really um he's he's really dialed back the I mean there's action in here and and there's quite a lot of impressive stuff in terms of um like battle scenes and stuff like that. Is but it, it Lucha Lang as well that choreographing this? Yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah, right, it's yeah. Tom Kai and Lucha Lang, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um and all that's fine. <laughs> but you know what I mean after you've after you've seen uh you know extended Chang Che carnage it's it's not that right it's not that yeah there's not quite enough carnage in this no That's, yeah Which, on the other hand would be fine if the rest of it i mean you, you you know you can't review a film for being what it's not right so that would be fine if the rest of it the more kind of epic historical stuff if that um if that was you know um if that worked particularly well but i don't think it does so it's neither the 
it's neither the the Chang chair falls out thing, and in terms of a historical speculative kind of uh, epic, it's it's okay as opposed to amazing. So for me, this is like, um, yeah, it's it's all right, it's okay, and I yeah. don't quite understand why it's revered as much as it is. Is that where or more or less you stand also, Darren, from memory? Yeah. Yeah, because because I I saw this really early on. Yes, yeah, this yeah. this was yeah. this was one of the Hong Kong legends that was in the VHS rental shop. So that'll tell you how long ago it was mm. um, that I saw this. And you know, it's right at the start when I started eating and drinking anything in kung fu that I could get. Um, and you know, at the time. You know, I did not have sources for any Kung Fu film I wanted. You know, I had to rely on what Hong Kong Legends put out and MIA and all the other ones, Eastern Heroes and all the other ones. Um, so, yeah, and and I always remember the trailer to this. So the trailer was that dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun music, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh my god! And it was like, you know, emblazoned across the screen. Great you trailer. know, Chang, yeah, 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 yeah. Chang chairs, bloodthirsty epic a tale of brothers and betrayal and honor and all that bollocks. Um, and yeah, I, I, I remember getting it home. I remember watching it, and I think, in retrospect, I think I made myself like and respect this film because that's what I was meant to do. Right. Because I was early on in my kind of, you know, fandom. You were gaslit by... I was gaslit. Hong Kong fandom. Legends. Yeah. Yeah. Hong, no, Hong Kong Legends did that, I think, with the trailer. Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, no, I, for me, um, yeah, you you nailed it. It's neither fish nor foul. It's a good drama. You know, it's, it's you know, I wasn't bored throughout any of it. No. But, and, you know, there's a few fights in it that are your standard early 70s, Tang Chiali Chalang, kind of more or less flailing around fights. Mm. Um, and there's a tiny bit of gore here and there, um, which is not what you come, you've come to expect from Chang Che, right? Mm. And fair enough, Chang Che is maybe trying to, to do something a bit different with this one. But the fact is, is that Chang Che is not very good at just drama. Uh, so, right. yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, it's, I think that, um, you know, I, I, the whole love triangle thing is reasonably, is reasonably good. But for a two hour film, you know, there, there's hard, there's not a lot of undulations in, in the love triangle. You know, it basically boils down to, you know, David Chiang spotting them in a pool or something and then finding a, a hair clip, finding yeah. a hair clip, and that's it. You know, so can... Sorry to interrupt. You should mention that it's Ai Quan behind the typewriter as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's so it's kind of, it's, there's not enough, you know, for a two-hour epic, you know, there's A, not enough battles, B, the battles aren't sweeping and epic enough um and see there's not enough drama in the drama if you know what i mean yeah i i, I agree i i, I it's funny because you know uh because of doing uh the other show not i've now seen two other adaptations basically of the same story right and i would say both was this of your, the sorry, actually... Nick, before just to interrupt you just to come yeah. because your was this your first viewing of this film as well yes oh yeah okay. yeah so I, I, I'd be very interested to see how you took it in. Yeah, and I watched this one first, and then I watched the other two, and then I wa I just quickly scanned through this one again to remind myself, because it was a month ago that I watched it, so I just kind of uh, scanned through it again. But um, but I would say, like, the uh, in terms of, like, wringing the most out of the emotional stakes, this is the uh, maybe the weakest of the three, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I yeah, would yeah, say, yeah. actually, the, the, uh, the more way more exploitational... Uh, Chinese, you know, torture chamber story too, and Warlords, uh, which I will get to later on. I enjoyed far more than I expected to because I normally don't have much time for 2007. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, I would say that both of those films ring more out of the emotional stakes. I will say for this one, I, I did really like uh, David Chang's swagger. Like from the, from the moment where he swaggers into court at the beginning, like the whole film, he kind of just, he's so laconic. But, but in a way that sucks out some of that, like he's not as tortured as some of the actors who play the same part in the later films, right? He's not, you don't get the he feeling that he's... From now on be called David Unflushable Turd Chang. <laughs> That's the one, yes. Um, David so I think... Flutter Chang. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, and I... I Show think, our like... deep respect for his work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dropping the think... kids off at the Chang. <laughs> Le Ying a Chang. Mm, yeah. T Lung, I think, as well, you know, he, he is great. I mean, he, he it's always exciting to see somebody who generally plays the good guy kind of, you know, go outside of that and 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 you know, because I mean a lot of actors are weirdly cagey about allowing themselves to play Yeah, actually know, it's a good like scumbags. Um, it's worth mentioning actually. There's there is a handful of them, but T Lung does make a good villain. Mm. Actually, and yeah, you're quite right. It doesn't often happen. Yeah, no, I think he he's 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 compelling. He plays the the part well. Um, but yeah, but I I, I tend to come down on on the same side as you guys. It, I don't know that it is deserving of the outsized reputation it has. Um, yeah, and for further context as well, it's kind of interesting considering that it is. It's the Blood Brothers, right? It's um, of three Chang Chair films, um, released in February of nineteen seventy three. <laughs> this is <laughs> the least enjoyable, right? I much preferred uh, the Savage Five, which yeah. has um, David Chang, Chen Kong, and Lung, and. Actually, the one I'm really looking forward to getting to when we get there, because I think it's massively underrated, is The Delinquent. Yes. Yes. That, that's a, that's that's Chang Che <sighs> properly um, firing on all the cylinders, I think. Yeah. And it's, oh, for sure, yeah. it's, it's not even his wheelhouse, because it's a urban actioner as opposed to mm. a historical. <clears throat> yeah, but then neither was Vengeance, and that's one of his best films as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which um, and, and that's that's the strange thing, isn't it? That's the weird thing about this film is is that it's more or less contemporaneous with those two films that we just mentioned. So, say Vengeance and The Delinquent, and we know Chang Che can is actually really good when he flips the, his own script, you know, and it's not it's not just you know flailing, you know, people in on on the shore back lot. You know, in a in a in a, in, a, in a you know siege besieging a a fort or something, um, but it's like he didn't flip the script enough in this one. You know, it's like he did want to make a move to to drama and character on this one and and dial back the the action, but yeah, he kind of didn't do it enough. He didn't flip his own script enough. You know. Mm. It does have a great ending, though. After after uh, David, you know, gets uh, gutted with a variety of fishing tools or whatever, like hooks and stuff, um, it then cuts to like all the other guys laughing and freeze framing on them, like it's the end of like an episode of the A Team. That was like, good. All the guys that was like, good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. Yeah. and then you know the end. Well, that's um, what I was saying about. That's what I liked about um, the cynical nature of it, because even though you made it kind of sound funny, and I can see why that's funny, I I think the thing there was that they, after all that, yeah, the heroic total, sacrifice, bloodshed, total, the bro, the bro code uh, game, right? Total yeah, yeah. bigger game, and I thought that's good because that's actually oddly enough something you don't get that much in Chang Che, right? Because Chang Che does go for the whole brotherhood, and, and often when he's filming. Mm -hmm. You do feel, ah, what a noble sacrifice to have strangled that man with your own intestines. What a noble way to go, you know. Whereas this one, oddly enough, is is actually, it's the flip of that, right? It's like, ha, you you are nothing. You mean nothing in the, in you know. So I appreciated that. It's just, it's odd. It's a shame that it's, you know, I'd quite like to see, and we'll see as we go forward, there might be a Chang Chai film that fits the bill, which is all the full-on, uh, stuff we've come to expect from Chang Che 
plus that dripping cynicism at the end. Uh, mm, mm. Things jump into mind, but uh, yeah, we'll 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 get there anyway. But yeah. it reminds me a bit of this thing that happens in in uh, Japanese yakuza films, right? You get you get a brace of these what are called ninkyo films, which are the ones that are all about the bro code and you know doing right and 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 you going head first into a hail of bullets at the end with your just your umbrella and your sword, you know, for your for your boss. And then you get right after that, you know, uh, Fukusaku Kinji's whole, you know, battles without honor and humanity, which basically go, no, that's stuff, that's bullshit. This right. is the reality of mafia life. It's nobody gives a shit about anybody else. And yeah, you fall on your sword, and your bosses just go back to smoking cigars. And I mean, they're not. Blood Brothers, is, Blood Brothers weirdly is in the latter camp more than it is. It is. Combat, which is yeah. 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 Also, most importantly of all. Music by Frankie Chan. Yeah. 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 I, uh, this I forgot. Has one woman as well, which is fascinating to me. There is a single, it seems like there's a single woman in this film. Um, and yeah, and she doesn't come out looking that good at the end. I feel like, I kind of feel like, wow. Um, yeah, which is interesting what, what they do then in, in Chinese Torture Chamber story, whatever the fuck it's called, too, mm. where they make her into the David Chang character. Yeah. I sense, yeah. I sense, Nick, that you're having a problem with the number two. Um, it's quite simple. It's a Chinese torture chamber story, and then a Chinese torture chamber story two. I do sometimes have trouble with number twos, it's true. Um, if I don't eat enough roughage, uh, right. I don't get the David Please, Chang. This, I, I, yeah. can't believe this. I don't know about you, Darren. I'm disgusted by Nick bringing down the tone of the show. Oh, yeah. I mean, necessarily. Yeah. Sorry, Where sorry, gents. This right, okay. So let's get it straight, okay? So we're a art house, serious film criticism podcast. Yeah, mm. we don't yes. want we don't want your brown bullets discussed. Yes. Okay. I don't want to hear you talking about squeezing Maltesers. I don't want to talk. I don't want to. Juvenile. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Yep. Sorry. All right. I'll keep him in my pants. Yeah. Um. Well. Well, try and keep them in the Oh, toilet. no, 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 no. That's not the right... No. I can see you're in need of potty training all over again. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> are we done with blood? I just realised, I just realised, by the way, I missed my opportunity to call Nick a cute pet name earlier on. Go on, then. Oh. Okay. Um, what did you call him? Honey Bunch. I can't remember. I no, so, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you Sugar Tits. Oh, thank you. Right. So, um, we'll be on that bombshell. Uh, we'll be picking up with uh, a couple more adaptations of the same story. Uh, that is a Chinese torture chip. Ah, uh, two. Oh, that's it. Yeah, and that's the fun. warlords in. Uh, not in Shaw Scope. And in the meantime, uh, Nick will be off having some maths lessons and potty training. So, mm. uh, yes. Until then. You leave my cutie pie out of this. <laughs> <laughs>